Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. This commentary is about what went wrong with Mitt Romney and my prediction. You see, I predicted Mitt Romney would not only win, but win big. What went wrong? I've been asked nonstop since Election Day, was your prediction based on hope or bias? Well, my prediction was based on a combination of common sense and scientific evidence. First, it was based on common sense that no president could possibly be reelected with the worst economy of our lifetime. With an economy that's produced more months above 8% unemployment, 43 of them, than produced by all the presidents between Harry Truman and George W. Bush combined. All of them only produced 39 months above 8%. People didn't just vote for the guy that brings you misery, malaise, foreclosures, bankruptcies, record unemployment, inflation at the gas pump and the grocery store. They voted with enthusiasm for him. That's crazy. This election, 100 out of 100 times, should have been a repeat of Reagan's landslide over Carter. Secondly, my prediction was based on common sense that all elections are determined by turnout, enthusiasm, and makeup of the electorate, and it could never be the same as 2008. Obama's coalition of minorities and single women and young people would never come out. They're the ones without jobs. They're the ones suffering with 14.3% black unemployment, 53% unemployment and underemployment for college kids. They'd never come out again in record numbers. No one is such a glutton for punishment they'd return and ask for a second helping of misery, malaise, and despair, right? Well, I was wrong. The 2012 electorate looked almost identical <clears throat> to 2008. Obama supporters didn't just come out for a second helping of misery. They came out and enthusiastically cheered for more misery. Lastly, my prediction was based on science. The University of Colorado's predictive model had never failed. I've watched it every year. It worked to perfection in the presidential elections of 1980, 1984, 1988, 1992, 96, 2000, 2004. It predicted a Romney landslide based on historical precedent and facts of economy on the ground in each one of the 50 states. This combination would tell you that in this economy, no president could be reelected. Unless Obama is more an American idol and messiah than a politician, and his followers ignore logic, facts, and the misery they're experiencing. Unless we've reached the tipping point that Thomas Jefferson warned about, where a majority now gets checks from government and realizes they can vote for the guy who promises to keep the checks coming and tax the other guy so they don't have to even pay for it. Obama's re-election proves bribery as a campaign tactic is validated. If you give people enough free stuff, even if the result is no jobs, no hope, and a lifetime dependent on government, they want more. You wouldn't believe that was true. Not in my America. But my prediction went wrong. They did want more misery. So, what else went wrong? Well, Mitt Romney did plenty to damage himself. Mitt Romney picked the wrong vice president. The GOP has to reach out to women and Latinos. There is no choice. <clears throat> Back in May, I predicted if Romney was going to win in a landslide, he'd have to name Marco Rubio as his running mate. And if he'd done that, he would have locked down Florida and made deep inroads with Latino voters. With an electorate divided almost 50-50, the Latino vote is the missing link. Attract even 5% more of that vote you win the election, attract 10%, you win in a landslide. Paul Ryan added nothing. He reinforced the image of the GOP as an elite club of white men. And in a diverse country, what that choice said was, diversity is unimportant. Worst of all, Ryan's views on abortion reinforced the GOP wanted to take away women's sexual freedom and rights. Ryan supports no exceptions for abortion, <clears throat> including rape, incest, or when a mother's life's in danger. Now, we didn't notice as conservatives, but Obama's team and women noticed Millions of female voters ignored the awful economy and record unemployment and voted for Obama based on women's rights. Has the GOP solved that problem? Simple. The next time any GOP candidate mentions abortion and rape in the same sentence, gag him, hogtie him, and put him in the basement until the election is over. The real answer is to run candidates who are fiscally conservative and principled, but socially moderate and modern. The GOP needs candidates that say, and I quote, Roe versus Wade is the law of the land. I will uphold it, even though my personal views are pro-life. And I will always, no matter what happens, support exceptions for rape, incest, and when a mother's life's in danger, period. That takes the issue off the table. And what's left? Jobs, the economy, spending, issues the GOP wins on. Finally, politics is like a football game. What matters is how you start, how you finish, your ground game, and your level of aggressiveness. Mitt Romney started poorly, allowing Obama's television blitz to define him as a greedy, mean-spirited robber baron. <clears throat> Mitt Romney ended poorly, spending all his money on TV ads instead of a ground game in a massive get-out-the-vote effort like Obama did. 
And in between, Romney was not aggressive enough on the two defining issues of the campaign. The first was the auto bailout. Romney lost the Midwest because of the auto bailout. Romney should have taken the offensive with this argument. President Obama tells us he saved the auto industry. And it was his one and only accomplishment, so he repeats it a hundred times a day. But the reality is he merely stole $25 billion from the taxpayers to protect the pensions of auto union members who contributed tens of millions to his election. And now you, the taxpayers, owe the $25 billion plus interest and you don't even get a car. And on top of that, he allowed private sector auto workers to lose their pensions because they didn't contribute to them. This is, without a doubt, immoral, if not criminal. That argument would have won the Midwest. Then there's Obama's Libya embassy scandal. Romney played it safe in the final debate and never even took the offensive on the issue of Benghazi, Libya. Americans never even understood the issue, but they would have understood one image. Mr. President, you denied them the security they asked for. You watched them die in real time. You refused to send a rescue team, and then you covered it up by blaming it on a YouTube video that had nothing to do with it. You left four Americans to die on the battlefield. Game, set, match. If Romney had been aggressive and not played it safe, would we be talking about President Romney today and celebrating my brilliant prediction? We'll never know. But if Romney had picked Rubio as his vice president and the GOP Senate candidates, Aikens and Murdoch, had never tried to tackle abortion and rape, I have no doubt my prediction would have been right on the money. But it wasn't to be. And now we've got Obama as socialist in chief for four more years, which means we better get busy defending our country and capitalism. It's going to be a busy four years, and I'm not going away. As a matter of fact, I'm stepping up to lead the fight. I hope you'll join me. I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. See you right back here next week, same time, same place. God bless.